Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. How are you? Thank you. Very good. Vamos a esperar unos minutos siempre a que los demás compañeros se ingresen y pues si hay preguntas o dudas también se puede. Ok, teacher. Good.
Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Okay, thank you. We're going to wait just two minutes, just to wait for the rest of the people to come into the class. All right. Okay. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. Uh, today is Tuesday and we're going to start, of course. I hope your day has been good, not so tired. And uh, we're gonna check about the platform, of course. So this is uh, the class number seven and we're going to check here the, the question for the class of today, okay? So that will be the question. And to start with, we are going to Check the attendance, of course. So, here we go. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Yes, teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Salmi Chavez. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Yeah. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good evening. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Good evening, present. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Hello, present. Perfect. Okay. We are going to start the class of today. We are going to start actually with a little video. So teacher, present teacher. Mira. Well, okay, I'm going to set it up right now. Hold on a second. Present teacher. Ah, oh, perfect. And Sammy. C and Rafael. Good, good. Okay, so we are going to start with a little video. 
So, um, of course, it's about logistics. I know the topic is it's interesting, but it's also kind of a lot of vocabulary and things like that. So, um, listen and watch the video and check about what do you understand about in the video and provide feedback at the end. Also, it's interesting when you listen to other person in English, native speakers, to check about the accent, uh, vocabulary, words that maybe you don't know or that they pronounce in different ways. So that is a very good thing. So I'm going to play a little bit and let me know if a perfect, good, Rafael. So, and um, let me know if you are able to listen and to see the video, okay? Are you able to listen and to watch the video? Yes, I listen. Good, good. So let's pay attention. And then at the end of the video, you can provide your feedback. Remember to practice. Welcome to Witron here at our headquarters in Parkstein in the Upper Palatinate. This is Walter Winkler. He founded Witron in 1971 and is still the owner of the successful family enterprise. It has always been his philosophy to support employees, provide responsibility, opportunities, and perspectives. Witron develops logistics and picking systems for customers from trade and industry across the globe. Thus, it is possible to efficiently store, pick, and outsource products of all kinds and to provide them in time whenever they are needed. And I would like to show you how such a logistics Center is developed by Witron. Rooted in the Upper Palatinate, Witron implements projects across the globe with employees from 35 different nations. The world is changing rapidly. It is becoming more and more networked, and product variety is constantly growing. The challenges for logistics experts continues to rise. Most people understand logistics to be trailers transporting goods from point A to point B, but there is more to it than meets the eye. The goods are provided from logistics centers that work with innovative technologies, which, of course, has many benefits. High cost efficiency for the operator, ergonomic workstations, efficient transport of goods, work relief in the stores, all of which benefits us as consumers. Witron is a leader in building such pioneering logistics centers. It all begins with the design. Witron engineers evaluate data and generate extensive analysis in close cooperation with the customer. Bit by bit and based on all requirements, Witron generates a layout, a material flow concept, as well as a computer model for the entire system, where all processes are put to an acid test in the course of the simulation. And this continues until everything fits. The design of a logistics center is always an exciting challenge. Of course, proven standard modules are the basis for every design phase. But every system is different, as they are all tailored to our customers' needs, which means that the combination of the individual components, material flows, and the timing are always unique. So. Hello, I'm sorry to pause it. Somebody told me that it's like a double voice, something like that. Everybody listens very well. Yes, I think it's part of video. No? The double voice is because the original language is German. I, I, I listen it. Yeah, and that is... They traduce yeah. to English, but it's uh, at the... at the How do you say at the... Yeah, in the background. In the background, yes, in the background. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that, English, that is what is happening. Yeah. So, is, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So I was just curious about that one. Uh, let's continue. Yeah. 
we are able to rapidly develop a solution for our customer that provides competitive advantages. In a logistics, logistics center, numerous processes run at the same time and largely automatically. After the first design phase, it is all about the definition and synchronization of these processes to allow a smooth operation afterwards. And this happens here at Wittron's IT department. Our experts deal with the required processes and develop the suitable IT solution based on existing standard modules. All steps are documented in a functional specification and are exactly tailored to the requirements of the customer. The Programmable Logic Controller, PLC, will then process the signals of all sensors in the system almost in real time. This creates commands for controllers and motors so that the transport systems in the warehouse can provide pallets, totes, trays, and roll containers to the right destination. The, IT. the brain of a logistics center is IT and control engineering, as those two components ensure that everything in the system runs optimally and smoothly. It is our task to develop the suitable software on the basis of standardized modules. This software is tested, simulated and then taken to the site. Meanwhile, almost six months have passed from start of design till today. The system is now ready on paper and on the computer. Now it will be built physically. This is the responsibility of our mechanical experts. They design and develop mechanical elements, draw detailed layouts, take care of the statics, and ensure accessibility of the system. The individual elements of the system are then produced in Wittron's own manufacturing facility, conveyor lines, stacker cranes, picking moguls, and much more. Every single piece has its special task in the system. What you see right beside me, for example, is a part of a tote conveyor line that will connect individual storage areas dynamically at a later point in time. Depending on the system, these conveyor lines can be either 2,625 feet or 19 miles. The same applies for the stacker cranes. Everything is possible between 5 and more than 200. Parallel to the mechanical production, Wittron also designs the respective control hardware and software of the individual mechanical components. Based on these specifications, the electrician will then build the control cabinets. The signals of the individual sensors are evaluated in the control cabinets, and based on this information, the drives are contacted directly or via drive components. This requires the highest possible level of precision and quality, as Wittron systems will work up to 24 hours a day, seven days a week after going live. The control cabinet production is a typical part of electrical engineering. The control cabinet combines the entire electrical engineering from power supply to control. The number of control cabinets depends on the system size. Depending on the size, it can be something between 98 feet and 1,476 feet of control cabinet. It doesn't matter where across the globe the system will be realized, all control cabinets are built and tested in Parkstein. Once the control cabinets and mechanical elements are completed and pre-assembled, a trailer will transport the parts to the installation site, where the building for the logistics center was erected by the customer. All components will now be assembled and put into operation. One entire system will now be created out of many individual parts. Now Wittron will bring the system to life. Some 18 months have passed from design start. Still construction, racks, conveyor system, motor drives, sensors, and many kilometers of cable were merged to form a large automated system. Ramp up can start. Together with the customer, Wittron will bring the system to maximum output while showing the customer all processes and functions of the system. The system ramp up is the important final phase of the project realization, as the system is now constantly brought to high performances. We work very closely together with the customer so that he or she understands all system functions and that they can operate the system on their own in the future. Some two years after a design start, the completed system will be handed over to the customer. But Wittron doesn't leave their customers on their own, not even when the system is already in use. After ramp up, Wittron's service experts are available at any time around the clock. They take care of the service, preventive maintenance, employee training, and spare parts. 
They also perform continuous system analysis and optimizations either online or directly on site. Even the entire system operation is sometimes taken over by Witron. Our task within service is to be available for customers at any time for issues around the system. It starts with simple maintenance tasks through to the entire operation of the system that can be taken over by Witron and continuous to complete system modernizations over the entire life cycle of a system. Thousands of articles of all kinds can be delivered in time and to the right destination with Witron's logistics systems. This is how we receive our food at the supermarket. The right medicine at the pharmacy? Thank you. And the spare parts for the car, anywhere and anytime. Logistics makes it possible. As a family business, Wetron places high expectations on itself so that its employees can always work under optimal conditions and develop themselves on a professional and human level. This is what Wetron considers when realizing its systems. These systems are also operated through personnel, and therefore Wetron builds its systems in such a way that employees no longer have to lift heavy weights in the warehouse and can continue to work effectively, independent of age and independent of gender. The environment also benefits from Wetron Solutions. Innovative technologies with minimum energy consumption preserve the environment, reduce CO2 emission, reduce outbound transportation based on up to 20% more efficiently packed order pallets, and allow the intelligent packaging of packages. This will become very important for the future as processes will accelerate. E-commerce, mail-order business and the request for same-day delivery is no exception today. This assumes extremely flexible and dynamic processes. And for this purpose, too, Wetron can provide a cost-efficient solution for its customers. Wetron supports the design of worldwide trade in the distribution center, with transportation, in the store, and for you as a customer. So, the thing here is, what did you understand about this, my friends? What do you remember? I know that it was a long video, but, I mean, ideas, what happened? I understand the logistics have uh, many processes. Very good. Some, someone, someone is with machines, and others, you need people using the machines, okay? And the new, the new option is e-commerce. It's a method very complex and simplify the, the production, reduce costs, it's more easy. Perfect, yeah, definitely it's easier, nice. Any other comments? Yes, teacher, uh, I understand which wrong is leader around the world. Very good. They are leaders around the world. That is not easy, right? What else? That the business of the logistics requires um, high technology and because they require um, a, currency, a currency, a synchronized, synchronized process. And now, is the each process is automatic 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 yeah automatic automatic yeah perfect very good thank you Salmi anybody else's okay. say that that they are in thirty five different nations. That is amazing, right? Yeah. Um, they mentioned that the world is changing, changing rap, rap, rapidly. Rapidly, yeah. Yeah. Um, logistic is more than uh, translate products 
that a point A to a point B is more, logistic is more. Uh, oh my God, they talking many things. Yeah. I, know. I don't know. Oh, at the end, they, they talk that they uh, move 2000 articles, supermarket, pharmacy, spar, spar parts, and they say that logistics make it possible. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. That is important information from the video. Good. 35 countries is not easy. That is a lot of things. Remember that every product is different, right? So to move products in 35 countries, that should be, I mean, a lot of work, a lot of designs, a lot of things. Any other opinion, any other comment? I, under, I understand that they create a machine. They create, they create a machine to control the warehouse pallet and all and the, at the warehouse. In the video, we can see the machine, the automatic system. That is true. To, to, to move in the product. Oh my God, amazing. <laughs> so I mean that their business is to create logistics for all their companies. So that is, I mean, for first of all, it's very complex, right? It's very, very difficult. And uh, did you see that at the beginning, the first thing that they do is to design in the software, they design a simulation, right? So they go, I believe, they go in an interview with the owner of the business and the, and the owner says, I need this. I have this product. I have these places where I need this to be. And I need to be fast and I need that the products are in good conditions. You, you know, everything that we have checked in logistics, right? Good condition, transportation is smooth, that is on time, that is the right quantity, right? So it's, it's very difficult, that is very difficult. So they uh, listen to the, to the owner of the company and they start designing in the computer according to everything that they have said, a simulation and they run the simulation. And if something is not correct, they go again and change things. So that is a huge work, a lot of work. Uh -huh. Hi, good evening. Uh, but, uh, there are different logistic services it depend on the business. Uh, for example, the uh, service uh, cost, uh, cost to document, for example, is a uh, some logistic service is um, is a warehouse of documents. Uh, to there are, uh, for example, a transportation uh, to material or equipment, uh, or have a warehouse for a. Uh, all kind of material for installation or include warehouse for a uh, full, for example, is a different different service. For each service, I think that uh, have a different uh, logistic operation, a different kind of machine for perseverance at different a product, a, there are a different control for the product. It's a big, a, it's a big operation for preserver or custom uh, a, a product. It, 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 no else uh, maintains the products to transportation this product, coordinate all all, all, all transportation uh, is it, is a bill is a bill uh, war because uh, in the in the logistic service uh, uh, count the time because the logistic 
uh, ha, always work with with a time. Time is very important in the logistic service. That is true. Time is uh, one of the most important things. Time is money here. And if you lose one minute, it's going to impact your business, definitely. And that is the complex thing about the, the logistics, right? As you say, every product has a different need. Uh, so to design logistics for one product, six products, a thousand products, it must be a huge work, must be. So it's a big control. Yeah, yeah, you need to know a lot of things, maybe, at the end, there are some errors, but there are just things that you can correct, right? Um, I have a question for you. You have checked how complex, how difficult is it? How much do you believe that companies pay to Witron to design the logistics of their company? Not that little, right? Millions. It's a big investment. Millions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you have to have the money not only to, to hire them, but also to implement the technology, right? To, to pay for the racks and the machines that are moving things and the system. And did you leave intelligence artificially in general yeah. because it's, it's necessary for to synchronize. <laughs> Yeah. Is no, it's, it's high, 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 high Yeah. A lot of money. They only to invest in that one. So, but remind the the size of those companies that they invest millions of dollars. But at the end, that is better than the work with people, right? Like I don't know. If you go to the supermarkets here in El Salvador, you will see that logistics is is fine. Products are fine, but you see that are people the ones that do that one, right? So there are people that they put things in order, the pricing and things like that. So it's like archaic, but it works. It works for here for Salvador. It's, it's fine because the model is uh, one a big central of the distribution. Exactly. Yes. So for the model is is working well. They don't need to do anything. Maybe the only thing that they organize is that they do it in the morning or at times that there are not a lot of people, right? So things like that, they are the things that they need to check. Um, there you, was... you, you mentioned something, teacher. For example, one thing that I don't like to go to Walmart is that when the supermarket is crowd all the personnel is putting the the things in the sh in the shell shelves and i hate that i say to my daughter i hate that the company uh, mm, how can you say no baby it shouldn't it shouldn't uh -huh. the company shouldn't do this these things they have to do at the early in the morning, I think, but it, it costs extra hours and they prefer that the, the customers have a little, oh, excuse me, oh my God, <laughs> but. <laughs> that is true, that is true. I mean, Walmart is huge and sometimes, the problem maybe I believe with Walmart is the delivery time. Sometimes they expect something at 10 in the morning, but it comes at four in the morning. And they decide, right? Let's move everything because what can we do, right? Yes, yeah, the the transportations are around seven a.m. in the uh, to getting into the supermarket, and that's the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a real problem. Sometimes the, the problem with logistics is that that if one piece is not correct. Is one person, if one transportation, if one system is not working properly, impacts the whole business. So that is one of the, the problems with logistics, that you need to do something very well so you avoid these kind of situations, definitely. There was a question at the beginning of the video that was very interesting. How would it be the world without logistics? What do you think?
Anybody? How would it be the world if we don't have any systems of logistics? Maybe it could be a disorder because I may uh, think uh, uh, logistic um, helps to uh, on, not only in the industry, uh, in all things to organize uh, different uh, distribution in this case, or um, um, maybe uh, uh, it's not only the order, also the time to to finish uh, the work of something. That is it, I mean, or this is going to be a mess with a disaster. What else? Who else? Is the world will be a mess. <laughs> a mess. Yes. I mean, with logistics, you are able to go to the store and say, I need this. Yes. And that's it. Without logistics, it's not possible. You need to wait for somebody to bring the things to you. Maybe that is not enough. Maybe the pricing are going to be different. Maybe we uh, will be limited. Limited? Limited, yeah. Uh, limited with the access to different products because now the products of importation is a lot of product of importation because um, it's sense of logistic process. <laughs> Yeah, imagine for this country, for El Salvador, where we do not produce that many things, right? So when we purchase beans, avocado, TVs, cell phones, so without logistics here, I don't know, <laughs> we might be back in the 20s or the 40s, something like that, right? So it should be very, very difficult. But the good thing is that we have logistics. So that's why it's very important to not only practicing this, but also to understand a little bit the topic because it's going to help us understand the world better and maybe organize our houses a little bit better. Good. Any other question, any other comment before we continue? Also in our, in our, in our personal life, we need the logistic to carry on the kids from the school. Well, I have to organize my time. I have to say, okay, I go feed for you, and then I go when all, all, in all the things we need, we need the logistic. That is true. Not only in, in not only in business. That is true. When you organize in a, yourself in a in a party celebration, we need a logistic. Yeah. Yeah. For everything, everything has logistics, right? And everything that we do or we don't do correctly impacts our. The, the money that we spend on things. So that is true. I mean, uh, when you go to the supermarket, it's because you organize yourself, right? You say, I'm going to purchase four of these, six of these, none of these. So that is part of logistics. So you have inventory in your house so you can cook, you can clean, you can do whatever you need. And uh, yeah, sometimes inventory also is impacted by some other things. So remember when pandemic came, the first thing that I did is to purchase a lot of canned food, but I was watching people with the toilet paper, right? And I was thinking to myself, why? What's going on? I was actually, uh, I was actually reading about that one because I, I, I didn't understand. And psychologists, they thought that some people came into the supermarket and they grabbed six packages and other people saw and said, hey, toilet paper, let's get more. And everybody got, went crazy and took. So contagious. <laughs> like, like, like the virus, like the virus. <laughs> Impulsive. <laughs> I don't know what, what happened. That was crazy. What's funny now, teacher, but in this moment was uh, uh, terrific. I don't know. It, yeah, I understand now. I mean, that's, I'm telling you, I went to the supermarket and I grabbed a lot of uh, tuna and beans and a lot of cans, 
rice. And maybe a little bit of to toilet paper, but not a lot. Of rice. There are some people that they're grabbing like four, six packages of 12 toilet. I mean, well, anyways, that happens sometimes. That happens. Very good. Good, so we are going to continue with uh, the class. We are going to check then the topic for today. The expressions of uncertainty. We're not going to discuss that a lot because we checked already, but this is the topic for today. So we checked already expressions of certainty, and this is like the opposite, expressions of uncertainty. When you don't know what is going to happen. So we have some expressions here. For example, saying you don't know, of course you can say, I don't know, right? I don't know how it's going to be the impact of the lack of inventory in the warehouse. I have no idea. I haven't a clue. Well, that is not correct, actually. That is totally incorrect. I don't have a clue. Or I haven't have a clue. So that might be. These are both informal. The other one says saying you don't know what it isn't. I know it isn't, so I know that this is not, okay? Or you can say, it's definitely not. I'm sure it isn't, okay? And the last part is saying you are not sure, but you have an idea. I'm not sure, but I think. I'm not 100% certain, but I might. it might be, or I might be informal. I'm fairly sure it's... Sure and certain mean the same thing. We can use either of them in these expressions. So this is like whenever you are not sure about saying something. So who can provide an example of using expression of uncertainty? Let's see, uh, Mayra, say an example of using an expression of uncertainty. Hey, hey good evening, teacher. Um, Maybe um, I don't know who was told me a new idea tomorrow. Okay, that is a good one. I don't know who will tell me a new idea tomorrow about this situation, anything like that. Good. Let's see, Susana. Any expression of uncertainty, a sentence, please. With the first or the second? Any that you may want to use, any. Okay, sometimes I don't know what I'm doing in this. Very good. Sometimes we never know, right? Sometimes we yes. go through life hoping for the better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I say in the class. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that happens right i know the topics are kind of kind of complicated sometimes but we're doing our best here um, okay thank you adriana please an example with any expression of uncertainty hello adriana are you here with us Hello, teacher. Hello. Yeah. Uh, could you please tell me an, exp uh, an, an example, a sentence using an expression of uncertainty? Mm. Teacher, um, sorry, no, I, in this moment, no, no play, pay attention. Oh, but it's very easy. Uh, so there in front of you, there in front of you, you have a list of expression for uncertainty. So what you're going to do is just to provide an example, uh, a sentence using an expression of uncertainty, like the ones that are there in front. So for example, um, it's definitely not, it's definitely not sure that she's going to say something about her husband, for example. So an example using any of those expressions. Teacher is right. I don't have idea. I don't have, well, because I have no idea. The expression is, ha I have no idea. Yeah. But the, uh, the idea. normal what sentence, that? I don't have idea, is right. Oh, no. I, no, I don't have idea is not correct. Is I have no idea. Teacher, but in, in some movies, it's very common that they say it. This expression. 
I have no idea, you mean, or I don't have? I don't have. Mm, I believe it must be, I have no idea. But sometimes what happens is like in every country, there are people that they don't speak properly. Uh, okay. That is like a purpose on a movie or anything like that. Some people, for example, they say, um, I don't know, what can I tell? Have you ever heard that they say, for example, in the movies, um, we is... Uh, we isn't here, for example. I have heard that in movies and that grammarly is not correct, but mm -hmm. that happens. I mean, everywhere here in El Salvador, sometimes we use Spanish in the incorrect way. So if you go to the grammar, you see that it's not correct, but we use it anyways, right? So it might be the way, that might be the, the idea. Okay, Adriana, you were going to say something, right? Or maybe not. Hello, teacher. Sorry. Don't worry. Don't worry. With my baby. Oh, hello, um, baby. Does she or he speak English? No, right? Hello, Mate Matias. Hello. Oh, nice name. How, how old is your baby? And uh, four years old. Oh, he's a baby. Yeah, very good. <laughs> nice. Okay. And. Mm. I don't remember teacher. Mm. Yeah. Any, for example, I don't know what to say. <laughs> that is a good one. No teacher. No. No se me viene ninguna. Okay, perfect. They are in front of you. Can you see them, right? So, Osmin. Help Adriana. Here comes the hero. Okay, teacher. Um, I have I have no idea uh, what will be tomorrow. Very good. I have no idea if tomorrow it will rain, or I have no idea if rain uh, it uh, anything. Right. So I'm not sure that is our sentence. Um, well, this is kind of easy, I believe. So there are just expressions that we can use when you're not sure about something. OK, so do you have any questions about this? I, I, I don't know. Uh, well, English. <laughs> OK, very good. Perfect. We're going to continue with uh, the logistic thing, okay? So, um, this is uh, like a definition for logistic. Jancy, could you please read this for us? I guess Jancy is taking some coffee. Uh, let's say Guadalupe. Could you please read this first? Yes, teacher. Okay. Logistic is integrated planning, form formulation, excuse, execute, execution, execution, and checking the material information flow from supplier to to business inside the business and out out of business to customer good. Schulter. Schulter is the author of this definition. So this is a very good definition, to be honest with you. For example, it says logistic is integrated. So means that is there are many parts in logistics. It's not just one thing. There are many parts that um, integrate logistics. So the first one is planning. So let's see, um, Sulma, what is planning in logistics? How is important that one and why this is the first part? The planning, because you need to know uh, that do you do in, uh, in the business? Uh, you need to think how you uh, uh, move the product to your customer, uh, how uh, you uh, 
by the uh, insum, insumos, how do you say insumos? You can say resources. Resources for the production, for example. And how do you uh, transport the product? All the all activities in the production uh, process and sales process. Very good, perfect, so definitely right. The first part on anything that you are going to do is to think about it. What do I want? How soon do, do I need this? How am I going to do this? And you plan, that is the first step. The second one is formulization, meaning that then you are going to go and and write things, procedures, processes, tasks. You say you are going to do this and you are going to do this and you are going to do this. So that is from planning for to formulization. Planning is like in general, what do I need? How do we organize ourselves? Formulization is to go step by step in the process and then put that in paper. The next one is execution. Pamela, what is execution in logistics? What do you understand about that? Hello. No. Uh, maybe it could be a, um, the um, this way to put in order. Uh, maybe I don't. Uh, the uh, yeah, me uh, the put in order to complete. Okay, very good. Actually, that is it. I mean, execution is to do things. So we plan first. We put in paper next and tell everything that everybody has to do, and then you do things. Okay. So now let's let's do the thing to see if this works. But after execution, that is not the end, definitely. Then it has another one that is checking of material and information flows. So that is one thing. Checking of material and information flows. So Michelle, what do you understand on this part of for logistics? Uh, I think that uh, execution, it refers to the way in which each process will be carried out the product definitely but what about checking of material and information flows sorry yeah so uh, we checked execution already but now the question is what is checking of material and information flows mm. Maybe the quality of the materials? Definitely, the quality is something that is very important. So uh, at this point, checking of material and information flows means that even when you have the process already, the procedures, and you are doing the things, you need to check if everything is fine, if the material is enough, if uh, you don't have any waste. A wasted time, wasted material, and information flows means the procedure and processes. So everything is fine. Can we improve a little bit more? Can we avoid this material that is wasted or these uh, steps that are maybe too many steps? Of course, everything is from supplier to business. Uh, so it's going to be like in the procedure of uh, the producer to the wholesaler and then to a retailer, for example inside of business and out of business to customers. So all the procedure. So that is it. Do you have any question about this? No okay. question, teacher. Clear as our chat, that right. So logistics has been called by many names, including the following, it says. So the first one says materials management. So in the beginning, People believe that the material management was the first and only step that you need to manage. Physical distribution, business logistics, that is very similar to the one that we have, channel management, distribution, 
industrial logistics or logic, uh, logistical management. So probably on some points, uh, depending on the industry or depending on the business, you can call it in a different way. So, but logistics in, in all is like the procedure to move everything until the very last step. And what we have here is benefits of efficient logistics management. So let's see, Sandra, could you please read the first one? Okay. One. Yes, please. One, improving customer experience. Okay, perfect. What do you understand about this? Why is this a benefit for good and efficient logistics? Benefits uh, for experience in That's logistics. Mm -hmm. So at yeah. the end, go ahead. Very, very important experience. Uh, uh, manejo, manejo. Manage. In Manage in warehouse uh, products. Very good. Uh, yes, so if you have a very good logistics system, the customer is going to be happy, right? Because you have enough mm -hmm. product for you to purchase. You will have uh, good pricing. Everything is in time, so you are happy. Also remember that customers is not only the final consumer. Uh, customers are like, for example, if you are in the warehouse and you are going to move the products to the truck, the people in the truck, they are your customers, right? So it's not just the final customer, but also any person in the process chain. I feel I, I seem, feel happy uh, when, when sales, uh, the the product in the moment correct on time uh, yeah when the customer comes and they say i need this and you say here is it okay everything has been successful good i feel okay. happy nice that's very good so floor could you please read number two Teacher. Okay, go ahead, please. Is number two. Uh, yeah, please. Op optimizing operation costs. Yeah, optimizing operational costs. Optimization. What do you understand about this one? Optimizing operational costs. It's a uh, distribution uh, material. Eh, um, distribution material in um, no sé cómo se dice para para reducir to reduce yeah to reduce is a cost for me okay very good so that is it. I mean, when you do a very efficient um, process of logistics, definitely the, the money is going to be more for the company and less for the wasting materials, time, procedures, and anything like that. So of course, this is a big, a huge benefit. Of course, if you do this in a good way. Um, number three, Ophelia. Number three, are working a profit, a, a profitability team. Okay, boosting profitability. So what do you understand about this one? Um, I noticed. Okay, I will help you, don't worry. Anybody wants to provide any opinion on the number three? Mm. In relation with with rentability, how do you say rentability? Profitability. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Profitability. I think is is for that. 
is the result. Is result the number two when you when you use the form correct, the time, the machine, the personal. Perfect. That is so true. You are very, very right. Number three is the consequence of number two. If you reduce the costs, if you are better managing everything, uh, like wasting materials and things like that, then of course you are going to your company is going to have more profit. So you will have more money for you, right? Good. Perfect. Number four uh, is going to be for let's see Nelson. Better, number four, yep. better intermodal uh, operation. What do you understand uh, on this one? Uh, better intermodal operation. Mm, I think the, the, when the, the, the products or, or uh, uh, and the, and the logic, uh, the people, and the preparer, uh, the mobility, and the products, and the and the dele delivery, and, and and the time, in the in the check the 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 quantity, and the quality, and the and the products. I think. Very good. So this is like the processes and procedures, right? If you have a very good logistic system, everything is going to work very good from department to department. From, for example, the warehouse to transportation, from transportation to um, the papers for you to go to other country, uh, the way that they receive, everything is going to be very nice, very smooth. If the logistic system is working properly okay number five is going go ahead sure what meaning boosting 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 what is meaning? like increase like in music for example increase. boost is like power right empower increase. something increase rentability so uh, increase in this case it's like increasing ah okay thanks yeah. perfect yep it's a uh, uh, the question number three a pronunciation is a boosting. 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 Boosting profitability. Boosting. Boosting profitability. Profitability, yes. yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So now we are in number five. Let's see. Number five is going to be for, uh, let's see, Rafael. Bonjour. Okay, so uh, let's see. Mayra, are you here? Yes, teacher. Teacher, Listen sorry, uh, I, I, I'm in the on the phone. Okay, don't okay. worry. Don't worry. Take your time, okay? Mayra is going to help us. Okay. Number four, teacher. Yes, please. Better intermodal operation. I'm sorry, it was number five. My mistake. Ah, okay. Number five, uh, creator delivery productivity and efficiency. What do you understand about this one? Um, I think that is when we try to optimize internal processes to work fast and better. Very good, that is it. Work fast and better. More products with less resources. So that is what companies are looking to get nowadays. Perfect. And the last one, number six, um, Michelle. Yes, intelligent route planning. What do you understand on this? Maybe um, it could be when, well, this benefit is uh, or help you to create a, an Efficient uh, route. Uh, 
or um, I, I don't know how to say it, teacher, pero Humble. es como um, te ayuda a crear um, rutas como eh, ¿Cómo podría decirlo? To delivery product. To deliver product, yeah. So, they optimize uh, sí. the, the route for the delivery. Okay. I yes. Perfect. Yeah, that is it, right? So um, it's not only the route, but also the time when you are going to deliver things. Have you seen, for example, when you go on the road in the highway, uh, sometimes at night, that there are a lot of trucks moving on, right? Because- Minimal cost, teacher, minimizes cost. Exactly, it's faster and it minimizes cost. I mean, some, the most of the truck drivers- uh, Efficient delivery, efficient that, delivery. That is it. So you need to be smart on this one, right? Because it's going to be better for the company. So that is it. Uh, yes, teacher. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, I, I think intelligent road planning is important for better service the customer. Definitely. So if you are in time and if the trust with the merchandise comes very fast, then the product is going to be available for customers and definitely they are going to be happier. So very good. Okay, um, we're going to do the pause. We're going to check the attendance. It's nine already. Let's see. Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present teacher. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamez. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solórzano. Present, teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present, teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. William Giovanni. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Very good, perfect. Okay, so we are going to continue. And let me see here. Oh, perfect, Jancy. Okay, we are going to continue with another video. Same uh, situation, please pay attention. Check what you understand about this one. And then we're going to discuss. You can discuss about what you understood, words, vocabulary, situations, and opinion. So here we go. Okay. It's 2008, I'm living the dream. Standing in our multi-million dollar home on Wainiki Island, looking out over the city skyline, I put my arms around Catherine and say, my wife, and say, honey, we finally made it. 
after years of entrepreneurial hustling and scraping, we finally hit the big time. My business partners and I were importing frozen pastries from a European multinational and selling them through supermarkets around Australia. We just, after two years, we just cracked uh, $10 million sales and we just also cracked our first million dollar month. Life was good and there was plenty of blue sky ahead. Sitting one morning, sipping my latte, reading the local paper, I saw an ad for a presentation about the World Food Forum that had just been convened in Rome. I thought, I'm in food? I might meet someone there. They expand our business into New Zealand. I'll go along. What hadn't occurred to me was that the World Food Forum was actually a gathering of delegates from governments all around the world to address the global food crisis that we were in the grip of. <laughs> so, and what I learned was that large-scale, mega-scale industrial-type food was forcing small-scale family farms and artisan food producers out of the market, which was in turn tearing apart the fabric of the community in the areas that those businesses were. And I was part of the problem. And sitting in that room, I felt, I felt like a fox amongst the hounds. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. So, but <laughs> I went home and I'm like, but what, what am I going to do? Like, wh what am I meant to do? I've, I've, I'm earning a living here. I'm, you know, I've got a family to feed. I've got a big rent to pay. <laughs> I, I can't. What would you do? And then something happened, unexpected, that made it crystal clear. The 2008 global financial crisis hit. Boom. The Australian dollar plummets against the euro, and we're paying in euros. So our business goes from making great profits to making terrible losses overnight. And the more sales we make, the more money we lose. We call an emergency board meeting. And one of the options put on the table is, look, let's just stop trading until things even out a bit, until we can renegotiate our, our prices with our supermarkets and the like. And in that moment, I thought, wow, I, we're only one of hundreds of food importers around the country, and I bet they're all having the same meeting about the same time. And I wonder if they're putting that option on their table. And I wonder what the supermarket shelves would look like after just a few weeks if all the businesses like us would have just say, just stop that for a little while, that food coming in. And in that moment, it became blindingly obvious how vital our local food growers and local food producers are. And then I had an idea. Ah, what if we could take the smarts, the technology, and all the complex, all the systems to solve the complex long distance supply chain and pair that with the short distance advantage of local food. Maybe we could cut enough fat out of the supply chain to make local food viable again. So, with a bunch of awesome people, a lot of awesome people, we started Ubi, which is a completely new kind of business model designed to revive local food. Look, there's more people who have helped out than the names up there, but this is certainly is a great effort, team effort. Ubi is basically like an online farmer's market. It's probably the easiest way to explain it. Or an online local food buyer's club. You can buy from a variety of local vendors, growers and artisan producers, and local commercial comp uh, food producers as well, and have them all delivered onto your doorstep in a, in a single box. Uh, the hypothesis for the business model was that by pairing the high-tech supply chain solution with a short distance advantage of local food, we could make local food as affordable and convenient as industrial food. And plus, with the trend away from uh, the, going, the, the shopping experience of going into store and buying your food, and more, t uh, and, uh, more back to the old-fashioned way of having your food delivered to your doorstep, because local food doesn't have all the retail infrastructure and all this rent and everything to pay, 
it might actually be far enough behind to be ahead. So here's how it would work. The, uh, you order your food on, on ubi.org, uh, the growers basically pick to order, then deliver the food to the ubi hub, and then it's packed and delivered to your door, all in one fluid motion. Okay? And uh, the secret source of the ubi model basically comes down to su the supply chain. So a traditional supply chain, you, the grower grows the food, then sells it and transports it to the wholesaler. The wholesaler then holds onto the food until it sells it and transports it to the retailer. The retailer then holds onto the food until you transport yourself to the retailer, pick the food up and transport the food back home. In that scenario, around 70% of the value of the food is actually supply chain cost. And the grower is getting about a third if it's, if it's just fresh food, the grower's getting about a third of the value, which is only really just enough to scrape by. International supply chains, on the other hand, are more like five or more links, where over 80% of the value of the food is actually supply chain costs. And the original grower or producer is getting less than one-fifth of the retail value. And only large operations can really afford those margins. Whereas with the same day two link supply chain that we were thinking about, the grower would be able to get half of the retail value and the customer wouldn't have to pay any more than they'd normally pay. Because we could pretty much cut out up to 30% of the cost of the supply chain. So everyone's better off. So, great theory, but would it actually work? Well, like the crazy entrepreneurs we are, we just jumped in and started doing it. We've now delivered over 25,000 boxes to over 1,400 doorsteps around Auckland. And we've got a prototype that we feel works. It does work. And in the last 18 months, we've been tracking our prices. And on par, we've been on par with the uh, supermarket and, and retail prices, their in-store sticker prices, and our prices are, are delivered to your door. So when you take into account that if the product's delivered to your door, you're actually making a bit of a saving. And everyone's getting paid above market rates. We do sometimes supplement our boxes from the markets when it suits the growers, but we always buy direct as often as possible. And it's great for our growers. Bill and Marilyn had been trying to keep their business alive for, for a long time, and the, the roadside stall was great, but it really didn't scratch the surface. Going to the farmer's markets is really good, and it meant losing their weekends, and if they didn't sell enough food, they had a lot of waste left over. Cafes, buy, little buyers, co-ops, organic shops, great, but after running around, it's really not worth the while. And it also works for our distribution team. On only three, as little as 300 customers in the space of a garage or shipping container, this is a very viable business where everyone gets paid a good, a good rate for their work. Today, this is our customer spread around Auckland, and we've just delivered our first box in Sydney. And we're adopting, uh, it, we're, we're looking at new cities around, around the world at the moment. Um, we're, Ubi, with Ubi, we're adopting the food commons model, which is an ownership and governance model that is collectively owned by the participants in, that are involved, including customers, growers, all sorts of different participants. So there's no fear of this being taken off on some private agenda. We are playing, Ubi is just playing a very small part in a global food renaissance that's happening around the world right now, a local food renaissance. <laughs> it's happening around the world right now. Our job is to connect in with all of the local food leaders around the world and work together to piece together a grocery, full comprehensive grocery solution that makes local food the obvious choice for everyone. But the thing that's best about this is that the solution is actually something we all love to do anyway. And that is, sit around a table with our loved ones and the people we care about, sharing a meal made from food that we can trust and connect with. So, it's good for you, it's good for your family, it's good for the world. So, let's eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we thrive.
Okay. So we are going to check into what you understood about this one. I know that this was a little bit more difficult, probably because of the accent. And also because he was just in a talk. He was not in a video filming something, but he was like regularly speaking. But mm -hmm. let me ask you, what did you understand? Nada le tendí. Nothing at all. <laughs> I know. In my case, teacher, teacher, I understand that thanks to the supply chain, he was able yeah. to expand his business and working with different suppliers. Very good. Perfect. In that different was countries. Nice. Very good. Any other comment? Technology, maybe anything, anything worse. <laughs> Okay, okay. Anybody else has something else to say about the video? What else did you get? Bye, Aguita. Uh, you understand this? La, la, la alfombra. Bye. La alfombra, okay. <laughs> what do you say, alfombra, teacher? The carpet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Osmin, tell us. Okay, this year, uh, I only understand. The, the main main conference in, in a morning in Malaysia. No. Okay, perfect. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Any other important thing? Oh my God, the accent was very very difficult. But he is talking with the public. He is uh, describing. I don't know, narrando. He's he's uh, speaking about himself. He himself. said that he said that one morning he was sitting reading the newspaper. He was thinking, and I got it. I was part of the problem. He don't know what to do. What are you going to do? And um, finally. Uh, he thinks in Ubi, Ubi was the brand and the business model, industrial full. Oh my God. Um, he was talking about the supply chain. Oh, he, he, the traditional supply chain, retail and the wholesale. Um, what about the Cadena teacher? Yeah. Chain. Yeah, the chain. Yes. The chain. He was talking about the, the the supply chain, the the traditional, the of the inter oh my god, I, I don't know using my letter. <laughs> but I understand that with the time he spread to Sydney. He's in Australia, I think. He's in Australia, and, that's why his yeah, accent is kind he of. He mentioned he mentioned that he spread they spread to Sydney with the company, understand. Yeah. It's a it's a grocery food of offering solutions. Good. Oh Perfect. God. That was very good. A lot of information. Good. Thank you. Anybody else's? Me. Go ahead. Um, he said when you use a many retailer or wholesaler, the benefit that you uh, have is less. And uh, uh, the business he proposed is the producer sell directly to the consumer, final consumer. Very good, perfect. Actually, that is the core of what he said. I will tell you um, a wrap up of what he said, okay? He said that he was very happy because he had a company, he was earning a lot of money. He was very happy with his wife and, well, he was happy. But suddenly something happened with his business and the market and the company started to lose a lot of money, a lot of money. So uh, of course his decision was to take out the company take it out of the um, of the Wall Street market, let's say. So, and he started negotiation, renegotiation with the 
with the supermarket because his business is that is to get some food, fruits and things like that to the supermarkets. But uh, well, he was in a, in a very difficult situation and he has to think about what to do, right? And he started analyzing and he made the same question that we asked. Do you remember the question that we said, why? Why, if we have a company, why uh, do we sell this to a distributor and then a wholesaler and then a retailer? That is going to be more complex and more expensive. It's not easier to go and get from the producers to the, to the final consumers. So that's why he did. Of course, the difference is that he, he has the money, right? And we don't have the money. So we have the idea, but just the idea is not good enough. So he restructured and he created this new company where he purchased from the producer and then he sell directly to the final consumer. So he has a very straight change. He invested in trucks. He invested in the little houses where you can go and purchase and things like that. And he has little stores across Auckland that is a is huge. Auckland is very huge. So, and in that way, uh, what is very interesting and what you have to think about it is that he says that the 70% of the final pricing of fruits and vegetables is from the chain, from the supply chain. So by selling from the producer to the consumer, finally, the price the price is decreased. So everybody wins. The producers wins because they pay a little bit more. Uh, they don't lose time and they don't lose money. And the uh, consumer, the final consumer, pays less for the fruit and vegetable. So that's why he did. That's why he says hack. Hack the, uh, the supply chain. Do you remember that is the, the, the title? It's like that, hack the supply chain. Of course, as I was telling you, maybe we can think about ideas like that. Hey, why don't we do this? It's easier, it's less expensive, it's better for everybody. The difference is that he has some millions so he can invest, right? Here we are sitting down and we have maybe, I know that people in El Salvador, they have a lot of good ideas, but, since we don't have the discipline and we don't have the resources, we are not able to change things, right? But that's the only thing that he did. I mean, he just removed from the logistics, removed the wholesaler, the distributors, the retailers, and he became his own retailer. And then now he sells more efficient and then a better price in the food. Very good, right? So now that you have an idea, what do you think? Is there any other opinion that you have about this situation? Logistics is very important in the warehouse, uh, manage, manage warehouse and the supermarkets and, and company, grandes companies, how do you Big say company. that? Large company. Big company. Mm -hmm. Oh, last company. Very good. Any other opinion? Any other? Okay, if we don't have any other, we are going to continue with the class. Okay, so there are different kinds of different kinds of companies or industries that manage logistics. Uh, for example, we have manufacturing firms that might be industrial and consumer goods. Let's see, an example of manufacturing firms, what might be? What could be an example of manufacturing firms? Uh, 
And las doradas. Okay, that is a very good example. They are the ones who produce, right? So they should be a very nice logistics, right? They should. Yeah, good. Okay, the other one says third party logistics firms like warehousing, dedicated careers, forwarders, etc. So examples for third party logistics firms. What maybe, do you uh -huh. maybe maybe runs a teacher? Okay, very good. Yeah. Yeah, then in San Salvador, there are lots of companies that they do like logistics, right? A lot yes. of companies. Yes. Good. What would be an example for merchandising firms like retailers or wholesalers? Super selector. Supermarkets, definitely. I mean, they are the ones who who get available all kind of products for the consumers. Uh, what can be a consultant firm? Is that strategy or technology or anything like that, like processes, procedures? So what might be an example of consulting firms? The photocopies company? No. It could Maybe. be. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot the name. Oh, my God. <laughs> Xerox. Xerox, yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, there are many companies that are consulting, you know. Um, probably uh, we don't know that many, but whenever we have a training or anything like that, we know. We know that they are consulting firms. What about transportation firms like freight and or passengers? So freight is like products. And the other one is for passengers. What could be transportation companies? Avianca, teacher. Avianca, definitely. That is one of the most important. Very good. Then we have here service institution like banks, hospital, etc. So any example of service institutions? Hospital El Salvador and the banks, Agricola. Very good. Any bank, any hospital will be fine, right? So uh, the next one is education organizations, uh, like or universities, training firms, anything. What could be an example of that? Very good. That is a good example. And the other one is says, I'm sorry? Definitely, Insofar is one of those. And the other one, it says government agencies, like federal, state, or well, any government agency. Embassy. What would, I'm sorry? Embassy. Embassy. Very good. Embassy yeah. America. Yeah, good. So the question here for everybody is, how do you believe are the logistics, depending on the kind of industry or company. So for manufacturing, maybe is the one that we have been checking, right? Or merchandising or logistics. Maybe those three are part of the ones that we are checking already. So that is like, you have a product or service and then you go to a wholesaler, for example, and then you need to check about timing and products and quantity and things like that. But what about, for example, consulting firms? What how how it will be the logistics of this kind of companies? What do you think? Since they do not have products or services, what what will be the procedure for them to provide the service? What do you think? What are the steps? that they need, they need to, to do, so they provide the service. They organize uh, uh, events, meetings, trainings, I don't know. Very good. They have to, they have to organize for please, the time, the, the facility. 
pass or the the person who's going to to oh my to share the 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 course the I don't know they have to organize many things yeah it's not the same right so yeah. for them um, well what I believe because I have never been working in a consulting firm but what I think is that they research first about the demand so they have um, they have to know what is uh, that the companies need to know so once they know that uh, they they uh, get ex experts right so they design they design like the training or the 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 teaching thing or the processes that he can implement in other companies and then they offer that to other companies we have this and the cost is this for one day for six days for whatever it's going to be so it's going to be totally different right for transportation probably is very clear i guess for service institution also is very similar to consultant firms and education is also very similar to consultant firms but what about the government what do you believe is the logistics in agencies like for example the u.s embassy or ministry of uh, taxes what do you believe is is like that For example, nowadays the logistic from uh, Hospital El Salvador was amazing. I think it was amazing because uh, they have the capacity to attend thousands of people to get the vaccine and they are transportation. There are many people that saying you for this way, for this way, come on, good morning, welcome. Oh my God, there was a lot of a big, a huge logistic inside uh, how do you say in the back uh, for this uh, is, uh, for this situation i think i remember oh that is actually a very good example i mean for the vaccines whenever the pandemic started i mean they they made a very very good job because they get the vaccines. I mean, logistics starts from the conversation, right? With other countries. Hey, can you please sell me some vaccines? I need vaccines for my people. And then uh, agree with the pricing and agree with the uh, shipping receive in the right conditions because the vaccines, depending on which vaccine was, uh, they need to be under certain temperature, right? So that was very important. Then, uh, they have to think where, what is going to be the vaccination center, right? Who is going to be there? How many people we need? We need security. So that's why we are going to bring some soldiers, some people that provide security. We need a system. So they have computers to check about your vaccination and uh, how old are you and things like that. And uh, they created also in the system a way for you to create an appointment. So you can come and check what will be the best place and the best time for you to come. And then the way that they receive people, come here, go there, wear this, uh, provide, providing some information uh, and then to the process of the vaccine and some recommendations. So it was huge. Actually, that was a very good example of of what we can see. Sometimes with the government, the problem is that we are not able to see their logistics. I mean, you just go and ask for service or pay for service or request something. But in this situation, that was in front of us. So we were able to see the logistics and that was a very good process of logistics actually. This the vaccination center is the good example of the logistics. Yeah, it's very good. And it worked nice. I mean, it was not perfect, but it was very, very good. Yes, because have many, many activities inside the uh, vaccine center, outside too, because there are two transportation. Only transportation is a big logistic. That is true. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I mean, when I went for the first time, 
that's one of, of the questions I was I was thinking. How is it gonna be? Am I gonna wait there for two hours, six hours? I don't know what's gonna happen, right? But now it was very fast, and they they had a lot of people, a lot, and the organization was very very good. So they made a very good job. The service for each uh, people was fifteen minutes. Yeah, in my maximum. And another thing that I really liked in that one is that everybody knows. I mean, you have a question and they say, no, you need to do this and this and this. So that was very good. I liked it. Yeah. Perfect. Let's move on. So this is, let me just move this, um, a planning triangle that we can use for logistics. So. Uh, let's see, the first part, uh, could you please read the first part, um, Guadalupe? Hello, Guadalupe, are you here with us? It's coffee time, I guess. Uh, Flor, are you here with us? No floor either. Okay, let's see. No, I'm gonna move it down. Um, Ricardo, could you please read the first one? Sorry, is what? In inventory strategy, please. Okay, okay. Inventory strategy. Inventory living. Deployment of inventories control. Method is starting control system. How much? Where? Very good. So that is whenever you want to plan a very good customer service uh, regarding logistics. This is going to be a very good plan. So the first one is the inventory. So inventory levels. Do you remember? This is one of the R's. One of the seven R's. That is the right amount. The right quantity. So we don't need a lot, but we don't need very little. We need the exact amount level of inventory. So you need to calculate that one and have some uh, uh, rates for you to identify what will be the, the optimal level of inventory. The other one says deployment of inventory. So how is going to be delivered? How is going to be moved? from point A to point B to point C, how is going to be processed. And of course, control methods. So now that we have the strategy, we need to check if it's working, if it's not working, if we can improve that one. And well, of course we need a strategy or control system. That is the one that we said. How much is costing? What is the cost of this control method and the whole inventory strategy? and where is taking place that one, how you are going to move from one place to another. Do you have any questions on this? Okay, the next one is going to be for Rafael, transport strategy. Well. <laughs> It's in me. Oh. So you're with your baby, eh? Yes. Okay. Don't worry. Take care of your baby. No, no. I know. Okay, go ahead. I want to participate. What part? It's transport strategy. Okay. Most of transport, carrier rolling, schedule, shipment size consolidation. Okay, so this is it, um, uh, just transport strategy. I mean, that is also very important. So most of transport, so which means of transportation I'm gonna use, a truck, a car, a trailer, we need to decide. A carrier routing or scheduling, of course, to organize the time of departure, the time of arriving, which papers am I going to have? Uh, there is something that is called, I, I don't know what is the name of that in, in English, but in Spanish is 
el marchamos, right? That is like a paper that you set into the truck. And I, I mean, even police, they cannot open that one. So it's, it's very, very important, those kind of paper, right? If they are transporting some information, so I mean, some products that are very, very, I mean, you cannot open that one. So the only thing that the policeman can do is just to check the papers. And when they see the papers, they say, okay, you're free to go, bye-bye, right? So uh, that is part of everything here. Shipment size and consolidation, of course, how many amounts, how many units of products am I going to send and uh, in what conditions? And the, uh, of course, the questions that we can ask ourselves here is which mode, which career, which route, shipment size and frequency. How often am I going to ship and uh, what is the level of the shipment that I'm going to send? Okay, um, the last one is for Sandra. Okay, location strategy, number, size, and location of facilities. A statement of stocking points to sourcing points. A statement on demand to stocking points or sourcing points. Private public warehouse. Okay, so this is about the locations. I mean, uh, this is another R of the logistics, right? The right place. So number, size, and location of facilities. So how is going to be? What is the size? Where is going to be located? And uh, the conditions, depending on the product, right? I mean, that is very important. Then assignment of stocking points or two sources points. So where is going to be delivered and where is going to be received? Departure and arriving. Assignment of demand to stocking points on sourcing points. So how is going to be uh, not only the place for, but how many products am I going to be able to place in these places? And uh, the last one, private public warehousing. Is going to be private? Is it going to be public? Is it going to have two doors, three entrances, air conditioning, things like that? And the questions for us to identify this one is where, how, many, what size, and the allocation. So those are the questions. So whenever you are designing a logistics system, this can help you. This can help you identify what you need to ask yourself so you can create a very good inventory or logistics system, let's say. Questions about this? Okay, let me think. Yeah, we have the time. Okay, and here we have uh, some other logistics strategy things. Uh, Rose, could you please read the first one? The objectives of logistic strategy are minimize cost, minimize investment, maximize customer service. Very good. So what do you understand about this one? Oh my God, the, the objectives are minimize cost and, and minimize the investment and maximize the customer service. Okay, it's, it's oh my God. Uh, if, you if you reduce your cost, uh, your investment, uh, is going to minimize and the customer service is going to grow out. I, I understand in that way. Yeah, actually it's like that one, right? So yes. logistics is money. Yes. That is, that is money, so. Logistics is increase, increase money. Yeah, increase the profit, right? The profit from for the company, that is it. So, there are very good companies that they want to increase the profit, that, but also they take care about the employees. So of course, there should be like a balance, right? That is very important. The next one is for Carla Vasquez. Only, only question, what is, Go ahead. You, what is use ROLA? Uh, just, uh, well, ROLA is like a, an acronym. Uh, it's like right, oh my goodness, I don't remember, right, uh -huh, leverage, 
right? Oh, the wow. oh, I don't remember. Leverage. Okay. Oh, okay. it's let it's me, an acronym. Let me find. <laughs> okay, very good, perfect. Okay, levels of logistics planning, strategic, tactical, and operation. Okay, what do you understand about these ones? Um, I think that all companies uh, offer that offer a logistic service there are a, there are a strategy for each a service for example for example a, I, I know that service that offer a ransa in a custom of document. For me, uh, this company offer a good service because uh, in, in their warehouse, uh, um, re, re, how do you say, resguard? Keep. Okay, keep the old document for example, in El Salvador, the record retention index is for 10 years. Is is mandatory that all company uh, have all documents for 10 years, minimum, minimum, minimums. Minimum. Yes, and Ransa uh, is where the, the uh, keep this document, but when you need Oh, oh, for example, when the tax authority, in this case, Ministry of Hacienda, need a document that, for example, 2002, and then uh, you ask Ransa, uh, Ransa, I need this specific document that 2002, these documents are in the box uh, 100. Any any number that that that, that box runs search or find the document that that you need in less three hours you have the document for me it's a very good service it's a strategic other option is you find the document in the um in the in the uh, website because all all customers have access that well uh, the website uh, where you find your self document but for me it's a good strategic good logistic good operational good tactical in each service of, uh, or in this case, uh, they keep a document because it's a, a many, many quantity of, of box that you, that, that, that you have in, in this service. Yeah, that is very interesting. I mean, when you have a large amount of products or goods, or in this case, papers, Sometimes it's very difficult to find exactly what you are looking for, right? Yes, if for for each company is very important that have this kind of service. Why? Because you don't you can have all documents in in the office because don't have the place, don't have the space, don't have the the, this uh, logistic for order each, each document. Okay, very good. Yes, it's very interesting. I mean, every company uh, and every situation is different, but the more yeah. that you have, I mean, to manage is, is more complex. So to have a very good logistic and that one is vital. Yes. Yeah, it, it's very interesting that serving of lo service logistics that offer this kind of company. Very good, perfect, thank you. So let's see, uh, the last one is going to be for, um, Adriana.
Okay, when to plan. No distribution network currently exists. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my bad. It's the, the other one, it's the four problem areas of oh, supply chain, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, the four problem areas of supply chain planning. Planning, uh, customer service levels, facility location, inventory the decisions, transportation decisions. Okay, what do you understand about this one? Um, this this problem um, and this problem um, when no ex no exists no exist, um, is supply chain planning in the in the in the business and the first uh, customer service levels okay in the in the for example in the problem inventory decision uh, when no existing and the supply chain planning not and uh, not um, the business uh, no not 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 take a good decision and uh, for uh, but not not planning not mm -hmm. Okay. Only that. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, actually, it says that the four more difficult areas for the logistics are these. So everything is complex. But if you, for example, the customer service levels has to be very good. And it's difficult because that depends on many things. If one thing is missing, if one thing fails, then the customer is not going to be happy. Right? So that is a huge problem. You need to, to keep all the process good, in good condition, efficient, so the customer at the end is happy. Of course, the facility location is also complex because you need to have the right conditions and you have to have the right size, the right uh, ways for you to move the inventory. Inventory decisions that we were saying also is complex. You don't have to have a lot of inventory and you don't have to have a little bit. And of course, transportation decisions. Uh, what time am, am I going to deliver something? What time or uh, what kind of truck or transportation am I going to use? So it's going like the four key uh, for any logistics. So if you solve these problems, well, everything will be fine. Okay, the last one now, yes, is going to be for Zulma. Okay. Uh, when to plan? No distribution network currently exists. There has been no revaluation in five years. When costs are changing rapidly, especially transport and inventory. When markets have shifted, when current, current distribution economics and current shift, when there has been a major policy shift in logistics, such as, an, as in price, customer service, service or investment level. Perfect, so what do you understand on this one? Mm -hmm. I understand uh, that uh, you need to review uh, the first plan. Depend how to uh, uh, how to currently the logistic is sourced. Uh, I think the number two in the list is very important for uh, you. Uh, you establishes the period of your uh, revaluation, the process, 
if uh, if the process is um, efficient uh, or or not you can be change the plan okay perfect yes actually it's it when you need to plan so that is the question so yeah you need to plan at the very beginning when you are implementing a business, of course. Uh, so that is like the first one, no distribution network currently exists. When you need to get a distribution network, when you need to implement some logistics, you need to plan. Of course, if there is a plan, but nobody has evaluated this plan in five years, you need to do that as well. You need to check what do you have, what are the procedures and the processes, and then see if you need to change. Uh, improve things. Of course, five years is a long time. So, <laughs> okay. And we almost finished, don't worry, three more minutes. So the other one, it says, when costs are changing rapidly, especially transport inventory, of course, if you see that the costs are increasing, remember that you are going to have less profit and definitely you need to plan, okay? When markets have shift also, that happens, for example, with the pandemic, right? In the pandemic, there were lots of changes because of that. When current distribution economics encourage shifts, so about money, if you see that you can improve and you can get more money, of course, you can, you can do some changes. And uh, when there has been a major policy shift in logistics, such as in price customer service on investment level, so that means that something changed. For example, sometimes here in El Salvador, laws change and you need to change that according to a law. So this is like when to plan. So everything that we have checked here is a good way for you to implement logistics. Probably right now you are not into logistics a lot, but we don't know. Remember that the reason that why we are here learning English is because maybe we want to apply to a new job, right? And maybe that job is part of logistics. So what you're learning here, even if you don't have that experience, it's going to help you understand what you need to do if you want to get a better job. Good. Any question about this? No questions. Okay, my friends, today was a lot of reading and a lot of vocabulary, but it was a very good thing. So do you have any questions before we finish? No questions. Okay, so we're going to check the attendance and I hope you have a very good night. See you tomorrow and uh, dream in English as usual. So, Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Dinares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Veronica Vasquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Uh, so for you is the 101 today, Carla Vasquez. Sorry? For you is the 101 today. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltran. Present. Good. Ophelia Orellana Arce. Osmin. Ah, okay. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher, good night. Good night. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rafael Ernesto Gonzalez Ventura. Present, good night. Good night. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodriguez. Present. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher, good night. Good night. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher, good night. 
Good night. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernandez Iraeta. Present. Good night. Perfect. So my friends, it was a pleasure to be here with you and have a good night. See you tomorrow in class and rest very well. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Okay, hello, how are you? Hello, I am fine. Perfect. <laughs> You're tired. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been difficult, but anyways, we almost finished. So um let me ask you, um, how do you feel that you are moving on? Do you feel that you're learning, you are getting some vocabulary, good practice? How do you feel the class? Uh, I like your class because for me is very interesting because is is very diversity to have a uh, different activities i like it for me is very funny is is I, I i enjoy each class really but uh, but i have a problem okay uh, for example in the activity that listening the video for me, it's very difficult because I have problem with the listening. I don't understand. I don't. I can't uh, connect to that each idea that uh, a speech. Uh, for me, is very very difficult. I don't understand. Uh, and this 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 part for me is very. Uh, I I feel in bad because I don't I don't listen I don't understand uh, the the speech. Mm, okay, very good. I, I have other problem because, for example, when I listening at not even uh, not even speaking English, I don't understand. But when I I listening, uh, 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 native is uh, uh, Spanish that uh, speak English. I I understand. <laughs> okay, perfect. So probably I guess that the the issue is the accent. Some people, yeah. well, for example, we watched two videos today. The first one was a little bit more clear, right? Uh, even when there was like a translator, uh, and it was like uh, an English. It was very good. The second one was more difficult because of the accent, because he was from Australia, right? So that makes it a little bit more difficult. And um, yeah, there are many activities that you can do to improve that one. So um, for example, one thing that you can do is to, to start watching videos in YouTube. So what you can do is this, watch videos that are not that long, maybe maximum 10 minutes from things that you enjoy things that you okay. like and you can play it first and try to see what you understand right try to, to get the ideas to see uh, you also can try to see what are the new words or words that you don't understand so you can get new vocabulary and then the next time uh, or maybe you listen to that you can listen to that twice and in the third time you can set the subtitles in english okay. so in that way, you are going to listen to the word and see the word there. And you will be able to identify the sound for the words and you will be able to, to connect the ideas. So it, that is a very good exercise. Uh, the only thing is that you don't need to get complex videos. Sometimes there are videos that are, or, or topics that are kind of complicated, right? So basic uh, videos will be good. 
Yes, I, I try to understand, I try to put attention at the video, I try to participate in your class, but I like really your method of, of learning, uh, but I, I, in fact, I feel that I better my, my English, uh, I know that uh, is a process, but I think that I like in the in good way. Very good. So that is very important. If you enjoy speaking, if you enjoy the class, of course you are going to improve. That is part, and as you say, it's a process. It's a yeah. process, but it's also very good that you know what is difficult for you. So you can practice that. So the more that you practice that, the better you're going to be. Uh, another thing that you can do is to watch a movie that you really like, that you really enjoy in English. And since you know what happens, so you are not going to be like frustrated, but you are going to try to listen, identify words. Those activities are going to are going to help you improving in the listening situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the, the word is my part. <laughs> Very good. No, th thank you, teacher, because your your class is very interesting. It's very funny. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't feel in. Uh, oh, real? Boring. Boring. Yes, I don't feel in boring during two hours. But yes, sometimes I have a sad. But for me, it's very interesting. It's very, uh, uh, I, I enjoy, I enjoy two hours okay. with you. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy about that one, very good. And uh, do you have questions about the topics or any topic grammar that you have checked in the other modules? No, 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 uh, uh, only I have, I have a problem with the with the website because in the model in the in the first week I have I I have complete I have complete all all homework but in the in the sorry let me see in the let, let me see the, the platform. <laughs> Of course. Because I need chat for explain. Um, for example, I review my my progress in. I saw that, for example, in the unit one, and the the distribution channel, I have only. 90 92 percent but but when, when yeah I, I remember that i have two two ay, ¿cómo sería? tengo dos dos ejercicios que, 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 que no se completaron okay but in the unit two i have progress 98 percent but i i had that a problem because in the unit two i complete the the progress uh, all all exercise uh, uh, was com completed but mm -hmm. i don't i don't know why have 98 percent it sounds like one question is the one that is missing uh what my recommendation is whenever you have the time checking unit two the exercises and check if one is in red or if one is missing. Sometimes it's a problem on the platform. I I reviewed the, the unit two and all all uh, all question I I have been complete. Mm, that's but I but I don't have uh, any that uh, bad. All all are good, but I don't know why. <laughs> okay, let me check to see what what can I see here. Ah, okay, so I will research. In the in the unit one, yes, I have to, uh, I can complete. But 
I try to uh, find my my room, but I don't I don't know. But in the unit two, yes, I review and all is green. The chat green. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let me just review and check if I'm able to see something there. Okay. In fact, I if uh, my my first test was was complete. Okay, perfect. That's good. Yeah. Okay, I will check onto that one. Okay. Uh, any other thing that I can do for you before we finish? No. No. Perfect. With that. Okay, Carla. It was a pleasure to be with you tonight and I hope you have a very good night. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.